On today's Comedy Heroes, we'll take a look at the life and career of the master storyteller from Cornwall, Jethro. I bought her a new car for Christmas. I did bought it. She said, that's no good to me. I want something that'll go from 0 to 160 in three seconds. <laughs> I bought her a bathroom scale. <laughs> Not long before this video was made, Cornish comic legend Jethro announced his retirement from stand-up comedy effective from the end of 2020. On his website, Jethro said, So, I think it's time to hang up my mic. It's been a hard decision, but my memory has made it easier for me. It was many years before I actually found out what Jethro's real name was, but this was not surprising as the man from Cornwall is quite a private man in real life. In 1948, the man who would later be known to everyone as Jethro was born Geoffrey Rowe in the village of St Burian in Cornwall. This historic village only has a population of just over 1,000 people. The St Burian male voice choir was founded by Jethro's dad, Hugh, and this is likely where Jethro gained his love of singing. Despite the similarities between his real name and his stage name, the moniker Jethro actually came from the character of Jethro Bodine in the 60s TV comedy series The Beverly Hillbillies. After leaving school, Jethro became an apprentice carpenter and also worked as a timber man in one of Cornwall's famous tin mines. Aged just 18, Jethro joined the St Just and District Operatic Society where his excellent bass voice was put to very good use. Touring the local pubs as a singer, Jethro started to tell jokes in between songs, and these jokes soon began to turn into comic stories, which took up more and more of his act. After a while, Jethro dropped the songs altogether and concentrated on the comedy. Because when I started first, Cornwall was not a hatchery for comics, and I just had to work out what was funny. I, I used to go, go to a show and I think, that story was funnier than that, but they didn't laugh enough, so I got it wrong. And I'd lie in bed for hours and hours, just trying to work out. I could swing that around, change a word to, to make it funnier. And I'd go out and try it. Sometimes it was worse, sometimes it was better. And then I could find it. I knew the story was funny, but I wasn't telling it right. But after 20 years of doing this and sleeping at night <coughs> and working on every little bit of the show, they said I was a natural. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it took me 20 years to become a natural. But... Things that, that I find funny wouldn't necessarily make the crowd laugh. I mean, there was a lovely story when a boy imbued in Cornwall went to the uh, building site as a job. He was only 17. And the boss said, can you make tea? He said, yes, I can. He said, can you drive a forklift? He said, how big's the kettle? <laughs> Jethro quickly began to build an audience and was soon the most popular comedian in Cornwall. However, his very strong accent meant that audiences much north of Bristol had trouble understanding him. In an interview with fellow comic Richard Digence from a number of years ago, Jethro explained how he was once asked to give an after-dinner speech at a venue in Morecambe, Lancashire. Unable to decipher his strong Cornish accent, the organisers of the dinner actually thought Jethro was drunk. The savvy comic decided to play along and did his whole act as if he was actually inebriated, speaking very slowly and repeating sentences. The audience loved it, and Jethro had found his comedy character. Jethro's first TV appearance came courtesy of Jim Davidson, on one of a series of specials which the Cockney comic made in 1982. However, it was the hugely popular Des O'Connor Tonight Show which turned Jethro into a star. He made his first appearance in 1990 and was then invited back by Dares on a further three occasions, 1990 again, 1995 and 1996. This national exposure led to Jethro landing his own one-off TV special in 1995 for HTV. Called the Jethro Junction, the show was a mix of Jethro telling stories from a studio set, film sketches and also footage of the comic out and about on location in Cornwall. 
In 2001, Jethro was on the Bill of the Royal Variety Show at the London Dominium Theatre. During Jim Davidson's time as host of the Generation Game, Jethro made five acclaimed guest appearances, twice showing contestants how to make a genuine Cornish pasty. There's also a famous outtake from one of the shows featuring Jethro and Jim Davidson dissolving into fits of laughter as the man from Cornwall tries to explain the origins of a Norfolk dyke dish. This is a very, very ancient Norfolk dyke dish. <laughs> <laughs> they got some very deep dykes in Norfolk. <laughs> Some deep dykes. Some of the deepest dykes in the world in Norfolk. <laughs> and what they do <laughs> in Norfolk, if you've got a deep dyke, <laughs> what do you do? It's a Norfolk dyke. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And then I've got any tissue. So what's this then? Mm. Well. <laughs> this is a device. Right, let's walk in and we'll do it right. Yeah. So we left this, left this. Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in the... Uh, <laughs> Norfolk. <laughs> they got some exceptionally deep dikes. <laughs> and this is for scooping out <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Right. This, Jim, yep. is a very long soup ladle. Jarfo <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> The real-life Geoffrey Rowe is a very different man to the character of Jethro that he portrays on stage. Quietly spoken, private, and someone who has always shied away from the glitzy showbiz lifestyle, Geoffrey Rowe is a successful businessman. For many years he owned his own cabaret club located in Loudown, Devon, where he still lives today. He's also a very highly respected horse breeder, and has been a winner at the Horse of the Year show on no less than seven occasions. However, it is as Cornish storyteller Jethro that we all know him best, turning old jokes and stories into hilarious rambling flights of fancy that paint vivid pictures in your mind, Jethro is the master storyteller. If you've never heard it, have a listen to his story, The Train Don't Stop Camborn Wednesdays. Over the years, videos and DVDs of Jethro's stand-up shows have sold in their millions, a testament to the enduring popularity of this engaging comic. Although Jethro will be happily retired by the end of 2020, via DVD and the internet, we'll be able to enjoy his unique brand of comedy for many years to come.